his son is laid on his descendant. Okay, Saturn's in his first house, just past the opposition to his son. So it, when you're looking at his chart, we know that Saturn's going to go down through the first quadrant. In seven or eight years, it's going to hit his IC. It's going to go over his moon when he's young. Then it's going to hit his IC, very formative, at about seven, eight. And it's going to build up. It's going to hit conjunct his son at about 12 years old. Then it's going to build up status to about 22 to get to his peak in status. Then he's going to extend that. It's going to come down to an identity crisis at about 27, 26, 27. He's going to have to put him, figure out a new site, the next cycle of understanding and learning a new way. So really, he built up the whole cycle, lived in a certain way. And by about 26, 27, he grew out of the old world. He lost his motivation, had to start in a new way. So we're seeing this just on his on his chart. We're going to see what the history comes into it, but um, we're really focusing on not his whole life, but in an eight-year period, around nine, four years around each way around 1912. But you can see that once you get used to doing the Saturn cycle, you've done. I did thousands of these before I did anyone's chart, so I automatically look at a chart. I see Saturn. I see where it's going to square up all this thing, and then I see where it's going to cross the angles, and I see what ages it will happen at. Then I'm seeing. Then I see it where it hits the sun. In this case, the Saturn's on the sun, so anything hitting the sun is going to hit the ascendant, descendant. So there'll be, um, yeah. So if we look at the Saturn cycle, this is an old Saturn cycle. I used this is one I, I used to use. Um, there's not the zodiac and the, the chart, the whole chart is in the center, it's just with Saturn at the bottom, and Saturn was a seashell. 45 degrees, give every 45 degrees made a little bend, and the 90 degree angles were stronger. And you can see the squares and the ages of a life unfolding like the top of a seashell. Then I would put the sun where it would be, and the sun would have the sun conjunct squares and oppositions to the sun. Would be put and the dates would be put on around that, and then you see the MC and the IC, and you shade in the half below the horizon. And I wrote the growth and functioning, growth and influence, growth and personal growth, and uh, personal growth and growth and capacity. I wrote the quadrant things further out where you would see them more prominently. I did thousands of charts like this, and I would explain them to people that work with it. It was really a foundation of my um, interpretation. I had people I did sessions for, and 20, 15 years later, 30 years later, they would come back and they bring this back to me. And, we have a session talking further about it. It's a primal archetype of time, of Saturn. So, okay, um, we'll come back to this, but I just want to show it. So it's a little different, but a little more, um, the one we use is just a circle, but you can see the zodiac within it. So I, I made it, it evolved to this, but there's something a little more artistic about these earlier ones. So it's nice to see one here. Um, okay, in our computer areas of seeing lists and things, we don't often get the graphic presentation so much. Okay, now what am I going to do here? Okay, this is um, a brief biography, I and mean, it's not the whole biography. I cut off some of the beginning, cut off some of the end to just carry the main points. But he got married in 1903, so he's born 1875, 03. Would have been 25, 26, 27, 28. So he got married with Saturn in his first quadrant. No, no, Saturn 2003, 25, 26, 27, 28. Yeah, with Saturn just on his ascendant, opposing his sun. Saturn going below the horizon. He gets married. Interesting. It's almost contrary, is it? Not. Marrying so much of confidence, he's at a point of biding his time, of being as far away from his goals as he could be. But he got married, and he secured a practical marriage that was stable and a foundation that would allow him to build in his own world. But he got married; he's going into his most selfish ten years. Usually, in a relationship, that means you go through identity crisis of what are we doing with each other. Then you get through differences of values. Then you have trouble expressing things to each other. And it often breaks on the rocks of poor communication by the time Saturn hits the IC. I mean, some people get through it, but it would have meant she had to give him the space to be whoever she was while he was going through this. He wouldn't have been so much supporting her as much as she would have been supporting him. Okay, so you can take any point and go in like this just from the Saturn. At the same time, 
he published his dissertation on psychology and the pathology of so-called occult phenomena. So he was already pu published something on occult phenomena that is part of his subjective journey, as part of his study. And even before he was doing research in word association. So as he here he was getting, that's the Freudian slip, the word associations. Then in 1905, still started, well, he starts lecturing in Zurich. And um, he did that until 1913. So from 1903 to 1913, from Saturn on the Ascendant down to the IC, he was lecturing at, at Zurich and in a, in a learning environment and writing. Um, in 1913, no, before that, in this period, probably about 1905, when he started doing the lecturing, he started letter correspondences with Sigmund Freud. So Saturn's down in the learning quad in this down 1905 would be Saturn below the horizon, Saturn returns, Saturn going below the horizon. He's identifying to someone who's established, who's doing psychotherapy. He needs to know it. He wants to add it. To, he has this psychology, he has this doctorate in psychology. So he, he wants to know a bit more of the Freudian approach, psychotherapy, his approach to other things. And, and psychoanalysis and he, he he wasn't in a strong position to be the authority he went in as a student to, to a line he wrote when they first met they spent 13 hours talking together non-stop they were so in such similar areas but but uh, and Freud was learning everything he could or Jung was learning everything he could and Freud was trying to teach and put out everything he could the only flaw in that ointment is that Freud was taking, Jung was taking all the information in, but was adding his twist to it, his mystical insights to it. Whereas Freud thought he wasn't, and he was just teaching him how to see it just practically. So Jung's Horace Moon could do the practical thing and, and watch it, but the Neptune Sun would always be wondering about other things. So, okay. So he began working with Freud in 1907, and Freud got him established in 1908 as the editor for the yearbook for psychoanalytical and psychopathic and psychopathological research. 1909, he, he opens up his own practice of psychoanalysis, which he runs with enthusiasm until his death, but he gave up his work at Bergozzi, which was the University at Zurich, I believe. 1909, he went on a lecture tour with the, to the States with, with Freud. So, the need to lecture, to express, to learn things. You see that that third house is very strong to express, to prove that he knows what he knows, to be believed. And in 1912, he did the lecture and he, came, and he published his book and he split with Freud. His book was The Psychology of the Unconscious, which was going a bit further out there than Freud. He was trying to get things down to more the, the Freudian perspective, the, psych, the sexual causes of things. and and so they split up over this. So, and after that, his life, his life, that's 1912. So that's still Saturn and below the horizon. That's going into the third house, but he got isolated. By the time down that Saturn's in his life, he's far away from career. He's isolated, people ostracized him. And, but then he was, um, then he had a bunch of horrible confrontations. We're gonna go through this, 1913, with unconscious psychosis. He resigned from International Psychoanalytical Society. Uh, then he got drafted into World War II and had to be a doctor, an army doctor, and was a command, a command, a do commanding doctor of a prisoner of an internment or prisoner of war camp, a German prisoner of war camp. So this caused a lot of questions and things. What really went on? What did he really do there? The take is generally he was trying to help people there. That was his interpretation of it um help them study or help them do some things but i don't really know at the end of this period of uh, at the end of the nazi period end of the the world war one period, uh, nazi period you have the seven sermons to the dead he published and that was just a saturn conjunct his his descent in the sun so by the end of this saturn conjunct so, so, so this was the saturn going to his sixth house his sixth house it hits his son and he publishes seven sermons to the dead and shortly thereafter, well, no, a little bit after, in 21, he published Psychological Types. And it goes on, but these are all 
in 1917, he used the, he, he was the first use of the word archetype, instinct and inbuist, 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 inbuist is, I'm not sure, okay. But it's archetypes and instincts. But so it became the word archetype in this book. So um, then he started traveling. When he went through his psychosis, he went through the traveling and, he, and the different cultures exposed to it. Then he did the publication of psychological types. Then he began, he said 23, said it's above the horizon, but he built, began building his scientific refuge, his tower in Bollingen. And in the early 20s, just so, okay, let's see, early 20s, just after as Saturn's going over his ring, as Saturn's in the seven dust, he began his, um, he meets Wilhelm and develops his concept of synchronicity through his work with the I Ching. Although he had been studying the I Ching for some years before that. So he was already familiar with it, but uh, Wilhelm brought it to the surface and brought things up and explained more things to him. And, he got he got the um, concept of synchronicity, developed it, and then wrote the intro by 20, 1929, before just before uh, Wilhelm, I think just before Wilhelm died, he he got the secret of the golden golden flower, and he wrote the he wrote the introduction to the Wilhelm Tsi Ching book, which wasn't published till after he was born, after he died, after after uh, Wilhelm died. Anyway, the different stories. So. I just going through it, he went to, he went to study a seminar in London, went to Pueblo Indians, 24, extended trip to North America, seminar in London, uh, went to, went to Kenya, and considered it all these major new insights. But as he got, he became, as he, once he got the secret of the golden flower, which was about Chinese alchemy, it began to pervade his thinking and go on. So, okay, this is pretty much um his story um i'm going to go over a few more things how we do for time okay good so i'm going to go over a few more things with this time where are we here just a few more takes on this and we'll be able to so i have a, i've gone along the saturn graph but not so much 1912 which is the one we're doing the session for was um, 03, 19, 11, 1912 was really the year where Saturn hit Saturn hit his squared Saturn and hit his IC. 1912. So this is the time period where Saturn's at the lowest point in his chart. He's furthest away from status. His crises in personal motivation. What motivates him? What doesn't? How he's going to live? That's the time when you know what you don't want. You don't know what you want, but you know what you don't want anymore, and you make a commitment around it. And then you think you're going to change things in a year or two, but it really changes over the next 15 years. It sets up the motivation for the next 15 years. So this is the time period we chose to look at. And then he's going to go through that time, then it's going to build up. So I'm not going to um, hold more solidly to the Saturn cycle. We're going to come back to the eight-year cycle. And um, here we go. Let's just, we get this graph. We get the eight-year cycle. We'll pull it up here. Um, 